Hey YouTube, it's Jeff at Dark Blue Metals. Today I wanted to share a quick tip with you if you happen to be one of the people who are still using the old school abrasive cutoff saws. Now, a lot of people on YouTube are starting to get into those fancier, uh, what they call cold cut saws. It leaves the parts cold to the touch, there's hardly any burr, you can cut multiple types of material with it. Uh, but the blades do cost about $100 a piece for the good ones. Um, I'm still using this old beast. Now I do have a wood cutting chop saw. And sooner or later, I'm going to replace this with the metal cutting version of the same saw with the 14-inch uh, carbide wheel. But for now, this is what I'm working with. So one of the biggest complaints, other than the heat and dust and everything else this generates, is that it leaves a pretty nasty burr on some of the parts that you make. In fact, I cut this off, and you can see that's supposed to be hex stock. You can see how nasty that burr is. I'm going to show you a trick that kind of eliminates that if you happen to have a saw that's set up similar to this one. And what I mean by that is specifically its clamping mechanism. So I'm going to move the camera over and give you a closer look at what I'm talking about. So this trick is specifically for round stock and hex stock. Uh, what makes it possible is the way this vice jaw is set up. This vice jaw is not perfectly straight, it's at an angle. And using this as a reference, you can see the angle I'm talking about. And that's important, because what happens is it allows you to tighten down the vise, but you can actually still turn the part slightly. And I'm going to do that while I'm cutting very slowly to get rid of that nasty burr. Now I'm going to cut just about a third of the way into this, and I'm going to just start slowly twisting the stock in the vise. And you're going to see what a difference that makes. Now, I don't know if you can see it's smoking, but yes, it is hot. But there is nowhere near the level of nasty burr that you get if you try to cut just straight through. In fact, let's cut one through all the way without turning it for fun and see what the difference is. And of course, you can see that really nasty burr. So there is quite a difference, just that little technique, turning it slightly, gets rid of a lot of extra grinding for you. One thing you can do to make this trick work even better is to have a backstop. If you keep your material pressed up against the backstop, it's not going to move side to side while you're cutting, and that'll maintain a straight cut. The project I'm working on has 50 of these, and I'm able to get 5 out of a 12-foot piece of material with just about that much left over. So, minus the end cuts, I've got 90 different surfaces that I would need to condition and get the burr off using a belt sander. Using this method, I'm going to have maybe one or two from where I just went a little too fast gonna save me a lot of time. I'm sure there are gonna be some people out there wondering if I've ever even used one of the carbide cold saws. And the answer is yes I have and I was very impressed with them. Um, I had a chance to do um, or participate in a demo at a trade show and I got a chance to play around with the evolution saws. Um, I played with one made by DeWalt and I was very impressed with how they performed and there were a couple other manufacturers there but um, those are the two that really stand out that I remember because I'm familiar with the brands. Um, when I buy a saw that's going to have the 14-inch carbide uh, blade, 
it is going to be a DeWalt. I'm not going to just beat around the bush. I have done a lot of research on it, and this saw is pretty much what the new DeWalt uh, carbide bladed saw, the 14 inch model, is based on. And this thing is a workhorse. It's already proven itself to me, and it's got nothing left to prove. Um, the base it's going to be the same exact height as this this particular saw, which means I can put them side by side on a bench. I can have risers on either side that match both of the cutting decks, and I can build a bench around both of those saws, and it's going to be a heck of a lot easier for me to cut my material, which is always a good thing. Uh, people wonder if there are any advantages to having one of the old style saws that have the, um, the abrasive wheel in them. And it's not a matter of where you can just convert them over. Um, you can't go from an abrasive wheel to one of the carbide uh, saw blades simply because the uh, RPM is different. The revolutions per minute is much faster on an abrasive cutting saw than it is on the carbide. And if you try putting a carbide blade in one of these things, not that I think it would fit, but you are going to smoke it and you are going to kill a hundred plus dollar blade. So, with all that being said, are there really any advantages to going out and buying an abrasive chop saw these days with the other options that are on the market. And yes, there are two distinct advantages to having an abrasive saw in your shop. Number one is if you're not familiar with what material you're cutting and you don't want to jeopardize a $100 blade, you can take one of these $7 to $10 abrasive cutting wheels and cut through the material. Yes, you're going to have to do a little bit of deburring, but you're not going to destroy a $100 tool that you have to replace. Um, and the blades really are the downside to the carbide saws. They are extremely expensive. The other advantage with a abrasive wheel is you can do this. Try getting a profile picture that cool with a cold saw. Alright YouTube, so if you have a saw that's set up this way where the vice jaw is slightly on an angle designed to better hold round stock, you can do this trick. Uh, if you have an adapter of some kind that lets you hold round stock where you can safely rotate it, you can do the trick as well. If your jaws are perfectly parallel to one another, don't do this trick. Because as you turn, what can happen is if you're not pressing down hard enough on the saw blade and applying enough pressure, the stock can come off of the table and twist. If your blade or the abrasive wheel rather, is deep enough in the material that could potentially shatter it while it's going at a high rate of speed. That's dangerous. I don't care what kind of safety gear you're wearing. It's not going to be fun. Plus, you're going to destroy your blade. You could even destroy the saw guard. So, if your vice jaws are perfectly parallel, do not try this at home. Um, if you have one of the saws that are set up like this, please feel free. See if it works. And enjoy the amount of time it saves you cleaning up your cuts at the end of your job. So uh, that being said, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will catch you on the next one. This has been Jeff at Darkmoon Metals. I will see you again soon.